and put a white piece of paper on there so you can actually see it. And I'll sprinkle some iron powder, these are little tiny particles of iron, that will trace out the magnetic field. It's collecting a lot of powder right between the poles, but looping out into space are these magnetic lines. Returning to the South Pole, traveling through the magnet again, and exiting the North Pole in a circular looping fashion. To understand how a magnet is able to generate its field, we must look to the atoms from which they're made. If you look at the model of an atom surrounding the nucleus in orbits are these electrons. These electrons are charged particles. That constitutes a magnetic field. So atoms can be atomic magnets. That's the reason something is magnetic, because of those atomic magnets. The paired electrons of many substances, however, spin in opposite directions, canceling out their respective magnetic fields. Magnetism results only when more of an atom's electrons are spinning in one direction than in the other, free to emit their magnetic fields. The atomic properties of magnets vary. There are so-called permanent magnets and temporary magnets, like the small bars on CD packages, which can lose their magnetism. To prevent one from triggering the security alarm after you buy a CD, the clerk uses an electromagnet to neutralize or degauss its magnetic field. And what exactly is an electromagnet? Like the name implies, it's any magnet that requires electricity in order to function. Kids have been making the simplest versions for decades. Just wrap some copper wire around a nail and attach the two ends of wire to a battery. The electric current flowing through the coil creates a magnetic field, and the nail becomes a magnet. Disconnect the wire and the magnetic field vanishes. Perhaps no one values an electromagnet more than the junk man. At Columbus Auto Shredding in Ohio, Magnets surging with electricity make quick work of scrap metal, bound for recycling centers. This particular machine works with joysticks, right and left hand. And we swing the machine over the material, stop it, maneuver the boom into place, let the magnet down onto the material. We activate with the right hand the magnet. We've got the material attached. We pull the boom back, pick it up. We swing it over the truck. Then we let it down into the bed, and then we use the left button to de-energize the magnet and let go of the scrap. This six-foot-wide magnet, capable of hoisting more than 5,000 pounds, was crafted here at Ohio Magnetics, just outside Cleveland. Its workers have been churning out king-size magnets for the steel industry since 1917. This is one of our Ohio Lodestar magnets. This is not a magnet unless electricity is running through it. The electricity comes in through the external magnet leads, goes into the terminal box, and down into the magnet coil. Manufacturing an electromagnet this beefy requires several exacting steps. It all starts with a roughly cast carbon steel case. This will house the coil that will carry the magnet's electric current. The first step is to flip the case upside down so a boring mill can hone its interior. This will ensure that the coil will fit inside it precisely. I have to check my measurement after every cut. That's to make sure that I'm not going over or I'm not undersized. The most important dimensions to hold inside of this case here is the inside diameter and the center core diameter. So the coil can't fit in there properly and rest on the bottom and on these shoulders here. The precisely machined case is also tailored to fit the bottom plate of the magnet on which the coil will be wound. This is the bottom of an electro scrap magnet. The bottom will get a layer of insulation and then around here we'll wrap the aluminum conductor. 
thin strips of aluminum form the coil, tightly wound around a core fixed to the bottom plate. A thin strip of paper called Nomex is layered between each wind. The Nomex electrically insulates the adjacent layers of aluminum from one another to prevent shorting. After the coil assembly is complete, a welder fuses the case and the coil assembly together. Then, workers pour in a proprietary insulating compound that will fill the cavity remaining in the case. The compound will prevent the coil from contacting the inner wall of the case, again eliminating the possibility of electrical shorting. It will also act as a shock absorber as the magnet impacts against the material it lifts. And it will help the magnet keep its cool. Heat is a magnet's worst enemy. A magnet will lose about 25% of its lifting capability during a day's uh, operation. The role of the compound is important because it transfers heat from the coil to the outside of the magnet case. And then air, which is around the outside of the magnet, cools the magnet to allow the magnet to efficiently operate. To cure the compound inside the magnet case, workers transfer the assemblage into an oven where it bakes at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for 12 hours. Then, after the magnet passes a series of tests, it's ready for action. As we've seen, lifting magnets make all the difference at facilities like Columbus Auto Shredding. But they aren't the only kinds of magnets the company relies on to extract the recyclable iron and steel. In its processing plant, where derelict cars have an appointment with Doom and the ravenous shredder, a variety of magnets await the mangled remains. It'll be their job to separate the iron and steel from the mass of debris. First, conveyors move the shreds beneath these rotating drums. Inside the drums, magnets set at fixed positions direct their attractive force down toward the passing fragments. The magnets draw them to the drum surface, where they adhere until they're rotated up and out of the magnetic field's range. The shreds then fall to a conveyor. The uncollected shreds move to another magnet, set within the body of this rotating belt, to separate the iron and steel the large drums may have missed. The magnet is in the center, and what happens is material is processed underneath the magnet picked up by the magnetic field and then moved out by this conveyor belt until it gets beyond the field of the magnet where it is dropped off. On average, the plant's magnets separate 500 tons of iron and steel each day, which the company then sells to recycling dealers. At the junkyard and across the globe, Magnets may not always attract a lot of attention, but their contribution is undeniable. One of the most ubiquitous varieties is hanging around in your kitchen. To make it, you have to shake, rattle, and roll. <laughs> 